Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to be speaking about Keen Box disease. My name is Tim Blakey. I'm one of the final year med students. So, what is Keen Box disease? So, Keen Box disease is essentially a disease of avascular necrosis of the lunate, um, and this leads to a progressive collapse of the lunate, and then a displacement of the other carpal bones and progressive arthritis in the wrist. It was first described back in 1910 by a Dr. Robert Keenbock in Austria. He was a radiologist who first described it as osteomalacia of the lunate. Um, however, as our understanding progressed, we understood that it was further avascular necrosis. So just a little background just to get us started. So the anatomy of the lunate, as we know, it's one of the proximal carpal bones. Um, it uh, articulates in the radiocarpal joint and it gets its name from the Latin luna because it's got a little crescent moon shape, um, which you can see on imaging. Um, it articulates with several other um, carpal bones. It has several ligamentous attachments, however, has no muscular attachments. And it gets its blood supply similar to the other carpal bones from both the dorsal and palmar carpal arches, as well as the deep penetrating branches of the anterior interosseous artery in most patients. And this is sort of important, and I'll get into the reason why that is in a little bit. So who gets Keenbox disease? So it's a pretty rare condition, but it most commonly presents in males between the ages of 20 and 40, generally pretty young guys. Um, and the reason they get it is still a little bit unclear. However, the major risk factor that we have identified in the past is just a history of trauma to that wrist. Um, so the pathophys of Keenbox disease, as I said, the mechanism still remains pretty unclear. However, we've identified uh, both biomechanical and anatomical risk factors uh, and uh, mechanisms that we know lead to the, prog the progression of the disease. And so probably the main biomechanical risk factor we know is an ulnar negative variance. And I'm going to get into what that is in just a moment. But essentially what this is is where the ulna, the distal ulna, is short compared to the radius. And therefore that increases the contact between the radius and the carpal bones, therefore increasing the stress placed on the lunate by the radius. Um, so how do we work out what uh, negative ulnar variance is? So essentially, um, we measure it on a PA x-ray, this is what OrthoBullets tells me, and we draw one line tangential to the articular surface of the ulna, and then another line tangential to the lunate fossa on the radius. And then if we have an ulnar neutral patient, um, we want these two lines to intersect. Um, and if these lines do not intersect, if the ulna is short compared to the radius in these two lines, then we have a negative ulna variance. And if we have a, uh, if the ulna is long distally compared to the radius, then we have a positive ulna variance. And the reason this is significant is because it um, changes the forces and the loads going between two, both of the bones. And we can see this here in this table. It sort of um, tells us what the forces going through the radius compared to the ulna are. In a neutral condition, 80% of the load passes through the radius. And as you get negative ulnar variance, more and more load goes through the radius. And that's relevant to Keenbox disease because there's more contact between the radius and the lunate. Um, other biomechanical risk factors identified are repetitive trauma to the wrist. Um, and a sort of traditional example is someone using a jackhammer at work. Um, anatomical factors that play into the development of Keenbox disease are the geometry of the lunate. Having a disformed or a particularly small lunate can contribute to the progression of the disease. And also the vascular supply of the lunate and what particular pattern of blood supply each patient has. So a majority of us, about 70% of patients, have dual blood supply to the lunate. We have two vessels coming in and this is from both dorsal and palmar surfaces. However, there are about 30% of people who only receive a single blood vessel which branches within the lunate from the palmar surface. And these patients are at a higher risk of developing Keenbox disease as it's easier for their vascular supply to be compromised. So how will a patient with Keenbox disease present? So essentially, um, they're gonna present early with just some dorsal wrist pain. It's most commonly in their dominant hand and, and will be activity related. So it might be related to their work. Um, there'll be some tenderness, point tenderness dorsally over the radial carpal joint. And then as the disease progresses, you can get some decreased range of motion. And then ultimately, you can get decreased grip strength. And this sort of occurs as you get displacement of the other carpal bones. 
So if we are suspecting Keen box disease, um, unsurprisingly, we use imaging to investigate it. So the gold standard imaging used is X-ray, and this is diagnostic of Keen box disease and is also used to classify the disease, which I'll get into in just a moment. Um, MRI can be useful, particularly in the early stages of the disease, because it can identify early Keen box before it is, can be seen on X-ray. And in the later stages of the disease, once the lunate has collapsed and there is displacement of the other carpal bones, CT can be useful to um, just look at the extent of which these bones have collapsed. So the Lichtman classification is the gold standard uh, classification used for the disease. And um, the stages of the Lichtman classification are all radiological. So um, in stage one, you'll have symptoms consistent with Keen box disease. However, there'll be no visible changes on an X-ray. However, this is where MRI comes into play because you can see changes on an MRI scan here. As it progresses to stage two, you will see some sclerosis of the lunate. And then once it gets to stage three is where the lunate begins to collapse. So stage three A is where there's lunate collapse. However, the scaphoid and the other carpal bones remain in place. Stage three B is where there's lunate collapse and there is some rotation and displacement of the carpal bones, particularly on X-ray fixed scaphoid rotation. And when we get down to uh, stage four, we get a significant degeneration of the ad adjacent intercarpal joints, and that's due to the displacement. So here's some example of images. I know the one on the left isn't the highest quality. I got these just off Radiopedia. Um, however, you can see in this one here, we have some sort of whitening and sclerosis of the lunate there. And then as we go over to this one, you can see that it, it progresses to a collapsed lunate. So this would be an example of a stage three moving to a, a stage two on the left, moving to a stage three. Um, and so how we treat Keen box disease is relative to the stage of the disease as identified on imaging. So if we can catch it early on an MRI, uh, the recommended treatment is just immobilisation and NSAIDs. And the period of time is sort of up in the air, but it's somewhere between three and six months they sort of recommend. Um, and it's up in the air as to whether or not this actually halts the progression of the disease because it is uh, dependent on what the actual precipitating factors are in the patient. If they actually do have significant ulnar negative variants, then there's a fair high chance that they may go on to develop progressive disease regardless. So once you hit stage two of uh, Keen box disease, the, the management is all surgical. And the surgical management that you will choose is dependent on what the underlying uh, pathology of the patient is. So if you have a negative ulnar variance, then you would use a joint levelling procedure of a radial osteotomy, I'll get into a moment. Um, however, if you have ulnar neutral patients or ulnar positive patients, you can use different surgeries, um, a radial wedge osteotomy or an STT partial fusion pin. And then also commonly used now also revascularization procedures where you get a vascularized bone graft and place it in place of the lunate to try and recreate some blood supply and bone there. So these are just some examples of the osteotomies that can be used in the early stages of disease. So as I said here, um, for an ulnar negative patient, you can use a radial shortening osteotomy is the most common one used. And that's where you essentially just take out a little bit of the distal radius and then pin it back together to create that ulnar neutral um, bed, bed bone for the carpals to lie on. The other option is the radial wedge osteotomy, and this can be used in radial po in ulnar positive or ulnar neutral patients, particularly of those who have a radial inclination there with an uneven bed. And this is essentially, again, to create a flat surface for the carpals to lie on and then decrease the stress going through the lunate. Um, this is an example of the STT pin that is commonly used, and this is most commonly used in the treatment if, it pre if the Keen box disease presents in adolescence and you don't want to go ahead and do a major sh bone shortening surgery. And this is essentially a couple of KY pins put through the trape uh, trapezoid into the scaphoid and they stay there for a period of time. Um, and this is essentially, the idea of this is that by fixating these bones together, you are decreasing the stress going through the lunate and hopefully giving it a chance to regenerate um, and recreate some blood supply. Um, and then as we get into the later stages of the disease, uh, where there is some scaphoid rotation and um, degeneration of the other carpal bones, the surgical options become more limited. Um, you can do a proximal row carpectomy, where you essentially take out the proximal carpal bones and then recreate a radiocarpal joint. Um, you can maintain some movement using this, and it's sort of preferred as opposed to a full fusion, but isn't appropriate in a lot of cases. And then the other option is, of course, a full wrist fusion. Um, 
So yeah, so in summary, the Keenbox disease is avascular necrosis of the lunate. It's caused by a variety of biomechanical and anatomical factors. They'll present early with wrist pain and then progress to decrease range of motion and grip strength. It's diagnosed using imaging and treatment can be splinting or surgical. And that there are the references that I used and thanks very much.